Yo, what's going on, Headliner Nation? Kyle back here with the Fantasy Headliners. Already did one show today talking about the signing of Janu Smith to the New England Patriots, but you know what? I said it was so nice, let's do it twice, and we're back for another episode tonight. Breaking down some of the other free agent rumors. They're not officially signings until Wednesday, but some of the deals that we're hearing coming across right now is breaking news. Now, in terms of like fantasy football, there wasn't a ton of relevant huge news today. There's still a lot of really good players out there that we're going to hear about over the next few days. But there's been a lot of smaller moves today and some guys that maybe they're not a fantasy football name by any means, but they're still huge names in terms of just NFL news and how they affect other players. So hey, do me a favor if you're new here to the fantasy headliners. Before we move on, hit that subscribe button, stick around, become a part of Headliner Nation today. Hit that like button down below and let me know in the comments which one of these signings you think is the biggest impact. Let's go ahead and it over. Looking at the New England Patriots, oh my gosh, Bill Belichick got that stimulus check in his bank account this morning because he went out and he spent dropping some dollar dollar bills, y'all, bringing in three guys today outside of John U. Smith, which we already talked about, and this isn't even all of them. Nelson Aguilar, wide receiver, two years at $26 million, million. Wide receiver Kendrick Bourne coming in. Linebacker Matt Judon coming in. Uh, Jalen Mills also coming in. So they made actually a few signings today. This is just a few of the names, some of the bigger parts that I wanted to throw in here and talk about. But Aguilar leaving the Raiders. I hate this move for Nelson Aguilar, and I hate this move for the Raiders. For the Patriots, it does give them a guy to stretch the field, which is great because that's going to help other guys. It's going to help the run game. It's going to help Johnny Smith underneath in the middle of the field, all of these things. But I, 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 I've I, spent today defending the fact that Cam's going to be able to get Johnny Smith the football. I don't know if he's going to be able to get Nelson Aguilar the football as much as Derek Carr did last year. Now, in terms of a per throw basis, the accuracy for Cam Newton on yard or on throws 20 plus yards down the field was a little bit better last year than Derek Carr, but Derek Carr threw the ball down the field much more often. Kendrick Bourne's going to be more of like a depth, not going to be a huge, uh, not going to be a huge contributor on offense unless some of these other younger guys who we saw step up last year not really do the same this year or get hurt. And then Matt Judon adding him to the outside a pass rusher to come back with some of those other guys um, that opted out last year on the defensive side of the ball, coming back to help out that defensive side of the ball and get after quarterbacks, whether it be Tua, Josh Allen, other guys there, Sam Darnold in the East. He's a big addition for them as well. The Cleveland Browns making a little bit of noise on the defensive side of the ball, bringing in safety John Johnson from the LA Rams, three years, 33.75 million Great, great signing for them. Johnson considered one of the better safeties in the league. Uh, May have been one of the best safeties even available in free agency this year. They go out and they bring him in to help stout that defense a little bit, whether it be trying to calm down some of the passing games uh, against them, whether it be to help come up into the box a little bit. John Johnson's a guy that can do a little bit of everything. The Chiefs. Now, this is definitely a big signing for the Chiefs. Offensive guard Joe Tooney. Five years, $80 million. This was much needed because this Chiefs team was going to have to absolutely retool the offensive line, losing a couple of guys, cutting a couple of guys. They were going to have to do that. And Tooney's a guy very versatile. He can play center or he can play either of the guard positions. So they could still make some moves. It lets them be a little bit more versatile in the draft. But this is really big news for Patrick Mahomes. And it's a big news for the run game as well. You know, with CEH last year, um, you know, obviously Darrell Williams, Damian Williams will probably be back after opting out last season. You know, get a chance to have Tooney come back is really going to help them kind of establish that run game a little bit more as well. So big signing for him. Definitely like to see the Chiefs getting out there and getting that deal done after reworking a bunch of other things to get under the cap. The Las Vegas Raiders defensive end Yannick Ngakwe. Terms unknown right now. Right now, we don't know a whole lot about this, but definitely getting a stout pass rusher was absolutely needed by the Raiders, and they go out and get him. And you know what? 
out there in the AFC East, you're going to have to have that because you're going to have to get after Patrick Mahomes. You're going to have to get after Justin Herbert. Yeah, I mean, you've got some really good quarterbacks out there. I'm not going to say Drew Locke right now, but it might end up being somebody else out there. You never know. Maybe Deshaun Watson ends up finding his way out to Denver. But you're going to have to get after the quarterback in that division to be successful. We are going to need to focus on that. Absolutely, 100%. Great job by them going out and getting this guy. For the Los Angeles Chargers, Corey Lindsley. Another big center signing. Five years, $62.5 million. Justin Herbert gets a little bit more protection on that offensive line. And I talked about it too in a couple of the offseason videos I've done this year. I really wanted them to go out and get some sort of an offensive lineman, whether it be in the draft, whether it be free agency, um, to really help establish a run game that seemed to maybe take a step back yesterday or this past season. So Corey Lindsley coming out being just a, a fabulous signing under the radar signing for them as well. Again, you get protection for Justin Herbert. You get a little bit of help in the run game. Five years, $62.5 million. You know, the, for Tooney and Lindsley, you don't really think about these moves as being like huge signings. You know, for, for either casual NFL fans or, you know, some fans who aren't really, you know, as in-depth in tune during the offseason, you see some of these and you're like, oh, yeah, you know, that's a good sign. But Having a you know having a good offensive line is so crucial to the success of an NFL team. And when you bring in centers like Lindsley or Tooney, who are NFL veterans that know how to handle themselves, to play the position, to communicate, to really be leaders in the middle of that offensive line, that's really big to bring those guys in, especially when you have younger quarterbacks that are under center. Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes seems like a savvy vet at this point. But he is still younger. I mean, he is still very young. So to have guys like that with your younger quarterbacks, guys you're invested in, it's it's worth it. Go out and make the moves. Get those guys and bring them in. My Detroit Lions making a little under-the-radar move. Defensive end, Romeo Okora, three years, $39 million. They're able to keep him in Detroit. He wanted to stay there as well, which... I don't know why. <laughs> Nobody else does. But anyway, he gets to stay there. They did draft his brother this past season, so he gets to stay there with his brother. Three years, $39 million. There gets to help out with that pass rush. You know, they're going to have to have somebody and the type of money that you would have had to have spent to bring in a pass rusher this year, they just weren't going to have it. So three years, $39 million to keep him in-house was absolutely worth it. And then, heck, you know, draft well. Bring another pass rusher in. Defensive end Romeo Okora staying with the Lions for three years. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, man, they're making moves still. Tom Brady, the Tom Brady effect, well in its uh, showing its head. Okay, uh, you you can see it when he goes to these teams. This is what happens. You want me to take a pay cut to stay here? Yeah, absolutely. We just won a Super Bowl. I get to play with the goat. I'm gonna do that. Defensive end Shaq Barrett, four years, sixty-eight million dollars. Ooh la la! Look at this man getting paid, and he deserves it. Big, big part of the front of the offense, or excuse me, for the front of the defense for them. They get to keep Levante David. They get to keep Shaq Barrett with a big deal there, and they also are bringing back Rob Gronkowski. We already knew that was gonna happen. Gronk said he would be back, but he's coming back one year at ten million dollars. For the Cardinals, the talk has been about the defense this offseason. Why? Well, you brought in J.J. Watt to help out, but defensive end Marcus Golden staying in, staying out in Arizona with the Cardinals. Two years, $9 million, a very good deal for them, but gives them that pass rush at the defensive end that they have to keep along with Chandler Jones and J.J. Watt because right now you're going to have to create some pressure. You got some holes in the secondary. You create some big pressure. It kind of helps make up for some of those holes. The Denver Broncos going out to Washington and peeling away Ronald Darby. Washington really wanted to get a deal done with this guy. They really wanted to bring him back, but that's not going to happen. The Broncos bringing him out to Denver at three years and $30 million. Hey, when you play in a division that has Derek Carr, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, when you have guys like that in your division, 
you, you got to stop the pass. There's going to be a whole lot of passing, especially considering the Broncos' offense hopefully takes a step forward this year with all of their weapons there, whether it be Locke or somebody else running that offense. Teams are going to be throwing against them. Bringing in Ronald Darby really helps kind of tone down the big plays that we could potentially see against that defense and really helps them out. Fantastic signing by the Denver Broncos. And for the Jacksonville Jaguars, bringing back a known face. Well, I mean, he was there for a very short period of time and did absolutely nothing. But running back Carlos Hyde is headed back to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Two years, $6 million. Now, a lot of people are going to be worried about this because of James Robinson. I'm not. I'm not worried about James Robinson. Carlos Hyde knows the Urban Meyer system. He played for him at Ohio State, so he knows what he's getting into there. I'm good with it. Bring him in, a guy that knows the system. He's a veteran guy that can help James Robinson continue to grow in that role. I would have been much more worried if they brought in a Chris Carson or a Jamal Williams. That would have scared the mm out of me. This doesn't scare me that much, or if they even would have drafted somebody. I talked about it in my video, the players with the most to lose. I talked about it at that point and was worried what was going to happen. But, hey, this is actually best case scenario for me. I mentioned then, it's going to be fine. They're going to bring in a veteran. They're going to bring in a guy just to kind of help fill that room up. That's what they need anyway, and that's what they end up doing. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Nailed it, baby. Day one of the tampering period is done. It's out the door. We've had some names that have shown up today, but we still have a lot of big names left. Will Fuller, J, uh, J.J. Smith-Schuster, uh, J.J. Smith, Juju Smith-Schuster, Will Fuller, Kenny Galladay, Chris Carson, Jamal Williams, lots of players still out there as free agents that are going to have to land somewhere and have huge impacts across the league. Like I said at the beginning of the video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, stick around here as a part of Headliner Nation, and leave a comment down below. Which one of these signings do you like the best? Which one do you think has the most impact? But I'm going to get out of here because if we've got some more breaking news, I got to be ready to roll and get more content out to you. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for stopping by. Stay safe. Stay healthy, and I'll catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners.